even with meekness. And we are praying that this world we cause life to break forth within us. This world will give us a grace for the race. This world will become the spectacle that we need for us to see well. Uh, no more seeing men as trees or seeing men as men. We are praying that our vision will be very clear and very sharp and far-reaching in the name of Jesus. Thank you, dear Father. I know that um, you are going to bless everyone wherever we might be located as we are strolled all over the earth. I bless your name for you are going to do beyond that which we have asked. For we have asked with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, I, I, I like you to open your Bible to the book of John, the Gospel, chapter 1. And I want to read verse 1. The theme or the topic, the theme of this um, holy convocation is in the beginning was the world. So I'm going to read from John chapter 1 and verse 1 in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god i am praying that the lord will bless this word in our hearts in the name of jesus um the verse that i've just read is um, not new and I'm very sure that um, a whole lot of us are familiar with this verse of the Bible, uh, possibly as I'm also familiar with it. I want to uh, ask you that um, you will patiently um, consider this verse with me um, today um, as we as we check through, as we look through, as we, as we possibly explore, I, 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 I don't know whether I can use that word now, explore what is um, available in this verse for us. Um, there are a few places where the, a book or the book like this, um, started with in the beginning. One is this John, another one is Genesis. As a matter of fact, um, my style of reading the Bible is that I read from Genesis to Malachi, and instead of me to read from Matthew to Matthew, I mean to Revelation. I will start from John. So I'll read John, then I will come back to Matthew. So I read Matthew, Mark, Luke. I'll skip John now and read Acts and then to Revelation. I do that deliberately because Genesis started with in the beginning. And the book of John also started with in the beginning. So I feel that um, for me, reading the New Testament, I should start with in the beginning just like the old testament also started with in the beginning and i am not by that suggesting that the way the bible is arranged is wrong it's quite right but you see just for me to have um, a desire flavor that i my heart cherishes when i read the word of god i i, I do it that way in fact there was a time i had already started reading matthew and i was almost at the middle of matthew when I remember that, oh, no, 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 that's not how. So I have to stop Matthew, go back to John, read over John, and then start it again from Matthew chapter 1. All right. Now, why did I arrange my reading like that? It's because of that phrase, in the beginning. The beginning talks about um, a foundation. The beginning talks about... Um, a starting point the beginning talks about um, 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 actually the start off and many times when we talk about the beginning we we talk about 
which um, uh, that which started off, that which uh, is the template, that which is the um, how do I how do I put it to you? Uh, maybe I should call it the foundation. I'm going to talk about it as we go on. Um, but uh, this day, there are a few other things that I would like to touch as we go on. Um, this Bible says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now, if you look at this verse very closely, you will God. Three phrases. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now, if you decide to take the last two words of each phrase, the first phrase is, in the beginning was the Word. So if you take the last two words, the Word, and then you take the last two words of the second phrase, with God, and then you take the last two words of the last phrase, was God. You can almost make it a, a, a sentence. It means, the word with God was God. The word with God was God. And you could almost say that the God with the word is God. Okay? Or the word with God is God. And the, and the God with the word is God. That, in a sense, we are going to look at because it brings, um, it brings a dimension of understanding to me that um, connects with the first phrase in the beginning. In the beginning was the word. Now, it, it, it tells me that the springboard, it tells me that the, the, permit me, the life that forms, um, that, that forms in the beginning, everything that you could see, the seed that started everything that could, you could see is the world. I'm going to look at it very carefully. Now, when I was saying that um, the word that was with God is, is God, and the God that was with the word is God. Um, I, I mean to say that there is a link in my own understanding um, showing to me very clear, 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 clearly that there is something that permits me, it's, it's difficult, uh, but I'm going to try. Now, when I talk about in the beginning in Genesis, and then in the beginning in John chapter 1, it is very obvious that the two scriptures are not talking of the same beginning. Because in Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, for instance, the Bible says, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Now that beginning that Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 talks about cannot be the beginning of God. Because he's only talking about the beginning when God created the heavens and the earth. And I know that God had been before the heavens and the earth were created. And so, in my, in my, in my, in my childish way of, um, of reading the Bible, um, I, I, I would say that Genesis chapter 1 means in the beginning that was not the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Because when God created the heavens and the earth, was not the beginning. But in John chapter 1, uh, it appears as if the beginning that John chapter 1 verse 1 talks about uh, is earlier than the beginning that Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 talks about. Because here the Bible says, in the beginning was the world. Now, this beginning was the beginning of the beginnings. This beginning was actually, how do I put it now, the, the start of point. Um, I don't want to say 
God began. I told you it's difficult, it's complex, uh, but I will, for the purpose of communication, because of our um, limited understanding, uh, you will permit me to say that uh, in the beginning, because there is, there is something that is called the beginning. Now, if you read the book of Revelation, you will have found that phrase. I am the beginning and the ending. There is somebody that is called the beginning. And so the Bible says, in the beginning, in the one that is the beginning was the world. Now, that is, that is stronger than a mere statement, just talking about um, um, eh, at the beginning was the world. Uh, yes, something like that. But it's difficult for me to tell you that um, God has a beginning because the Bible never confirms that he has a beginning. He has no end because he has no beginning. He's timeless, he's ageless, he's boundless, and he's endless. And so, something that is timeless, something that is ageless, some that is boundless, some that is endless, you can't say sort has a beginning. Alright? But I like to say to you that what the Bible says is in the beginning. In the one that is called the beginning was the word. That one that is called the beginning is also called the end or the ending. We're going to deal with it if the Lord, you know, so permit us within the, the time that we have to look at these issues. But I am drawing this first and foremost because I, I, I want you to acquaint yourself with the language of the Bible. I want you to, I want you to come to that point where you are not confused as to what or who the Bible is talking about. Now, you will find out that in verse 2, even though it is outside uh, the precinct of this discussion, you will see the word, the same was in the beginning. And it looks like a statement. And actually it is. But I know that there is somebody that is called the same. The same yesterday. The same today. And the same forever. Now, the same was also in the one that is called the beginning. In the beginning was the word. In the beginning was the same. So, when we are looking at this phrase, in the beginning was the word, and the word was may make it to look as though past, in the beginning it was, and then you may say, but now it is not. <laughs> You'll be making a very great mistake, because the same was in the beginning. The one that never changes. The one that is ever constant, ever consistent, was in the beginning. That, that, that which does not change. I, I don't know how to put it. I don't know how to place it. Uh, like I said, it's difficult. It's complex because I am a human being. Uh, so it, it's difficult for me to describe God who made me. How do I describe him? <laughs> How do I describe him? He is the one that can describe me. I, I can see his starting point. Yeah, but the little that the Bible provides for us is what I am trying to uh, pass across to you, asking the Lord by his spirit to beam his light into our spirit so that we may understand. So can I quickly remind you what we are discussing it is in the beginning was the word so the word the beginning 
the word was in inside the beginning and if you want me to just look at it as a statement which i want to run away from as much as i could in the course of this meeting i would like to say it if you want me to put it as a statement that the word was that is the word has been from the beginning okay and, and that 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 in a sense um will imply that what forms the beginning or what forms the foundation or what forms the starting point of everything that you may see now or you may see later actually is the world now i am not a scientist but sometime i eavesdrop and i hear you know scientists talking and sometime and i feel this is this is wow now when they tell you that uh, atom is the it is smallest divisible part of an item or of, of something i don't know if that my definition is correct it, it means that if you take this my face too well now and you divide it into two then you take half you divide to two and you take half and you divide to two and you keep dividing you will get to a point when there is nothing to divide now that that which is no longer divisible is called atom and everything started from that point so when it comes to a point where you cannot divide it again it becomes invisible and i said that's the word that's the word that was in the beginning because it was invisible however it was located in the beginning it means that every man that want to access the world must also fraternize with the beginning and in fact must find his or her way into the beginning because it is inside the beginning you will find the world now having said that i think also i need to also bring you to another dimension of what we are discussing so when the bible says in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god it, it, it tells me straight that um god was because the word was I wish I could, uh, I would not confuse you. And I don't think that's difficult for you to pick. But let me put it in another form. It is as though the Bible is saying, remove the word, God is not. And remove God, the word is not because in the beginning was the word now the word was not just in the beginning it was with god now being with god makes the word god so the word and god coexist together and it is it is like take the word out God will be no more. And take God out, the word will be no more. So, the word, permit me, and God, they are one and the same. I wish I can break, down, break that down a little. But if, if, I, if I feel so pressed, I will do that. But I want to establish something. That's why I made 
these few statements. If um, without the word, God will be no more, permit me, then I ask myself, who then is or can be? What then is or can be without the word? Permit me, I am saying that if God and his word had to be together, and everything that we could see today were made by the word of God, if I feel pressed, I will open the book of Hebrews, you will see that by faith we know that the words were framed by the word of God, that things that we see are made of things which do not appear. That's why I was talking about atom the other time. Now, if everything we see today, or what we may not see with our natural eyes, were made by the world, and God himself cannot do or cannot be without the world, outside the world, in the absence of his word, then I ask myself, who can be without the word or what can be without the word that is going to make me to think with you a little bit that will make me to um, ruminate over some few things which I think we need to check together So, you will ask me, bro, if you are saying without the word, no one is. But we have people who don't even know the word, who don't even relate with the word, who don't even believe the word, who even hate the word, and they are. So what, what do you have to say to that? And of course, there are people like that. And you might even be one of them. Who hate the word of God. Who never believe the word of God. You believe you exist by yourself and for yourself and um, in yourself. I call it self -ocracy. The government of self by self and for self. And you don't care what God is, who God is, and what he feels, or what he thinks, or what he wants for your life. You just run your life based on your own terms. And you are doing well. You ride a nice car. You live in a very beautiful house. You have a very beautiful wife. And you have good children. And you are doing pretty well. And yet you don't believe the word. You are even an atheist. Yes, that's possible, but it's doesn't, it doesn't change what I'm reading here. Do you know what? In, in the book of Genesis, maybe I should read that um, so that we can be on the same page. Genesis chapter 1, I'm going to read a very popular verse that you know, verse 2. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Now, the word or the phrase without form means it's shapeless, it's formless. The word void, if I read it in the Amplified Bible, it says the Earth was without form and an empty waste. That's what um, Amphor Bible put it. That's how he put it. NIV says, now the earth was formless and empty. Now, when you say something is empty, it, it means there is nothing there. That's what it means. So something is empty, it means nothing. But I'm surprised that the earth that was said to be empty, the Bible says there was um, darkness, 
there and this darkness is so visible that it was reported that there was darkness. I saw waters. So how do you say the earth is empty and yet you could see darkness? Is darkness not something? What about the waters? I mean, not just um, little water. The Bible call it deep. The face of the deep. The whole earth was covered with water. That's massive. That's bigger than the Atlantic Ocean. And yet, the Bible said, the earth was empty. So, I asked myself, how do you say the earth was empty when those things are there? Now, just imagine a student in an exam hall. He had his answer scripts with him and he has the question paper. And then he picks his pen when the invigilator signaled that the, they should start. And he picks his pen and from the very beginning of the exam, this, this person never stopped writing. The first page was full, the second page was full, the third page was full, the fourth page was full, fifth, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve pages was written full. You will say, this guy, if it were to be in Yoruba language, in, among us, they say, Otishewe, he don't do book. However, there is only one person who determines whether that student wrote something or not. It is, the, it is the examiner. Now, when he presents this 12 page script before the examiner, and the examiner goes through it and crosses each page and said, Nonsense. The man will claim he wrote something, but the examiner says, You wrote nothing. So, the fact that a man could be seen, the fact that a man is well known, the fact that a man is doing well does not mean he is. There's only one person who determines whether a man is or not. There's only one person who confirms whether a man exists or not. It is not your car that confirms your existence. It is not your good job that confirms that you are. It is not that you are making waves on social media that confirms that you are. Your maker confirms that you are. And there are things you look for. Once those things are not found in your life, you are simply an empty shell. You know, I wish I could open the book of Peter to you and read and open the book of Hebrews and read to you. You will find out that as God made everything by the power of his word, he also preserves. He also sustains. He also keeps everything by the same power and he reserves them for fire. So God has capacity to look at a man who is not because he is not standing on the beginning. He is not living by his word, which I'm going to discuss. And as far as God is concerned, that man is not existing. And yet God can still keep him by the power of the same word he despises and make him to thrive and make him to flourish and make him to do everything just because God needs him as fuel for fire. Just imagine. You may have a tree or some plants around you who planted um, you know, some plants in front of our house and um, the soil that were brought began to also produce some other plants. I saw the plants there. But I felt, yes, these weeds are not going to be here. But we needed to allow them to grow well so that it would be easy for us to uproot them. Now the fact that they are growing, flourishing, does not make any difference. As far as I'm concerned, as far as we are concerned, they are not, even though they are visible. They are not, even though they are flourishing. Each time we wet the plant we want to wet, they also enjoy the water. 
but they are meant for destruction. Now, young man, I like to say to you that you might have despised the word of God. You might have discountenanced the word of God. You might have been running your life uh, by yourself. Um, it's okay, but I just want to tell you that uh, the fact that you are enjoying certain benefits, um, you are not... Um, you had, a flat, you had a tire bust on the road. You were in that vehicle. The vehicle looked as though it's going to roll over and it stopped and you escaped. Um, does not mean anything. I tell you. It doesn't mean that the Lord is happy with you. Those things might just be happening to you so that your fall could be great. When a tree is growing, it's noiseless. But when it falls, it makes a loud noise. Everybody around will look at that direction. So sometimes God keeps a man growing like that so that when he crashes, everybody will know about it and they will fear. And so it is only those who don't know will be carried away by what you are doing and what is happening to you while you lead a godless and wordless life. Only those who don't understand how God operates will be, will, be, will be fascinated and we just look at you as though you are doing something as you have packed God aside and you are running your life outside the word of God. Can I quickly read a verse for you in that same John chapter 1 before um, I start to look for how to, to tie some of these issues together? Before we pray. Now, can I just read verse 3 of John chapter 1? Uh, I'm reading it in the King James, Old King James Version. All things were made by him. That is by the word. And without him, the word without could mean in his absence. The word without could mean outside. Outside or without him was not anything made that was made. Now, I, 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 I want to quietly settle this uh, angle that I said I needed to bring, this dimension I needed to bring into the discussion, that everything you could see, visible or invisible, was made by the word of God. The fact that a man is living as though God does not exist and he even claims that there is no God does not mean that that person is not made by the word of God. I wish I could, I could, I could say it better. But truth is that Whatever it is, whoever you are, God made you by his word. And I'm going to deal with that in a short while. And that if you will make it, you will only make it by his word. Because that is what has been in the beginning. And I told you that the same that we call the beginning is called the same. It doesn't change. Constant consistent it doesn't there is no shadow of turning with him now having said all of this it is therefore important for me to to bring you quietly to looking at this word in the beginning was the word as a way of um, beckoning on you to consider what we are to consider in this holy convocation, so that when I return, a few hours' time, we might find space to do some little, little, permit me, exploration of the word of God. Now, can I say to you again that this phrase that we are looking at says, in, that is, inside, 
the beginning was and i want to add still is the word in other words you know i am thinking that if the word which i'm going to talk about eventually in the next part of this um, discussion if the word is not inside the beginning if permit me god made the mistake of putting the word in that which is temporal in that which is um how do i put it now let me use the word human being if god made the mistake of putting the word in human being now i know the word lives in us yes but that's not his abode the abode of the word is in the one that is called the beginning now if god did not put the word permit me in the beginning if he allows the world to float around till now, I am sure that human beings will have tampered with the world. What we will have today will have been an edited version of the world or mutilated version of the world. But he kept the world in the one that is called the beginning. Who began, permit me to use that word, when no one was. Who began without a beginning so that nobody will be able to tamper with the world. I am going to deal with it. Now, Yoruba has an adage. I don't know how to say it in English. I will try. That the moon comes out beautifully in the sky. And then you are saying it's not sitting well. Yoruba says, if your hand can reach it, go and adjust it. If you say the way the moon is, is not proper, is not properly positioned, then go there and adjust it. If your hand can reach it. Now, what does that imply? It implies that there is something about the world that are, I, I don't know, but I, I know that some product comes, some product come with seal. And they tell you that once the seal is broken, don't accept it. It is to make it tamper proof. It is to ensure that the integrity of that product is preserved until it gets to the user. And in my mind, I am also thinking that for the integrity of the world to be preserved, so that at all times it could be trusted, so that at all times it could remain potent, it is kept in the beginning. I don't know why the Bible did not say um, in the end was the word. Yes, I could draw some scriptures that could allude to that. But you may not find it straight this way. Now, in my mind, I am thinking that the beginning is a point of freshness. I am thinking that beginning, permits me, is always morning. I am, I am thinking that beginning is always, permit me, foundation. Something that is new, something that is fresh. So the word is kept in that which is fresh. The word is kept in that which is new. The word is kept in that which is morning, light. When you wake up in the morning, you are fresh, you are strong, you are agile, you, you are just ready for the day. In the evening, you are tired and you want to withdraw. You want to rest. 
You want to lie on your bed because you are exhausted. But in the beginning is fresh. So the day is fresh in the beginning. Now, people want to do something great. They start off in the beginning, very early in the morning. And I want to say to you that for me, it is because God wants to preserve the freshness of the world. God wants to preserve the newness of the world. God wants to preserve the ever relevance of the world. He has kept the world in the beginning. Now, just a few more minutes and I'll be rounding off. So, what exactly is this suggesting to us? Now, can I just read um, a verse unto you or two in verse 4 of the same chapter? The Bible says, in him was life. So I ask, what is that him? In the world, if you like, in the beginning, was life. The word that was in the beginning was life and is still life. So any man who does not access the word has no and has not accessed life. Anyone who is not in him in the one that is called the beginning, such a man will have no access to the world and such a man will have no access to life. Uh, by default, such a man has access to death and destruction. Because everything was made by the world. It, it, it means that anything that does not agree with the world or anything that jettisons the world melts, becomes unmade. And you can just imagine that excuse me, you can just imagine that your life collapses without the world. You can just imagine that your life becomes meaningless without the world. You can just imagine that the relationship you are in right now is heading for the rocks because it's running without the ruder that is called the world. You can imagine that this business you boast about we melt because you run it outside the world. Life is in him. Life, and I mean life, real life, true life, is in the world that was in the beginning. You might have met a lot of people who tells you this is how to live. You might have read a lot of books that tell you this is how to run your life. I have no problem about it. But I'm just afraid that he who is not the beginning, how does he want to um, help you to run your life? And it will align with God's mind, God's vision that has been for your life from the beginning. That's my fear. That's my fear. How do you, how do you arrange marriage and it does not align with what was in the beginning and you expect that marriage to stand? No, it won't, brother. It won't. You cannot enter into marital relationship outside how God set it in the beginning. If a foundation is cast and it's a um, five-bedroom um, bungalow and you decide to go and put what we call in this part of the world uh, OAU, Organization of African Unity. Face me, I face you. Or face me, I slap you. 
Now, if you go and construct such structure on a foundation that is designed for five-bedroom bungalow, that house will not stand. So, what is now, if it doesn't agree with what was in the beginning, you can be sure that that's an accident going somewhere to happen. Now, all I am doing, this first part, is to generally open your eyes to the word, the phrase that we are dealing with in this holy convocation. That the word that we are going to be looking at very critically when we return is inside the one that is called the beginning. And if you are not a friend of the beginning, you cannot access the word. The angel told the shepherds the day Jesus was born and said, look, to you is born this day in the city of David, a savior, Christ the Lord, and shall find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes. And the shepherd rushed. When they got there, the Bible said, and they found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Now, I thought they were going to find the babe because that's what the angel said. But they couldn't access the babe without crossing the gate of Mary and the gate of Joseph. They met Mary first. Mary led them to Joseph who must give the approval. It was when Joseph opened the gates, they were able to access the babe. Now, if they ignored Mary and they ignored Joseph, they will have also ignored the babe. If they discountenance Joseph or Mary and they discountenance Joseph, they will have discountenance the babe. Jesus said, look, if you, if you, you cannot, you cannot, you cannot hate me. And claim to love the Father. If you love the Father, you will love what I tell you. The fact that you hate my word is a sign that you are not the friend of the Father. You are not the friend of the beginning. That's why you are an enemy of the word. So I am going to pull this together when we return this the next time. Um, that should be barely about four hours or thereabout from now. I, I want to say to you, beloved, I have not said anything this morning, rather than to just open, just open, just throw it open, for you to have a space to think, for you to have a space to ruminate, for you to have a space to um, readjust your goggles so that you may see well that from the foundation was the word. Everything that is, is built on it. And anything that is not standing on it is an accident waiting for time. The word is located in the beginning. So when you see the word in a church, you can just be sure that the word that is called the beginning is inside that church. When you see the word coming through a pulpit, it is because the one that is called the beginning is on that pulpit. Otherwise, you cannot access the word. Now, I want to say to you as I run off, because this, this meeting is well timed and we want to walk to time. I want to say to you that it is not possible for the word to be and the beginning will not be there. And I want to say to you that it is not possible for you also to be in the, in the, in the sight of God. I, I read somewhere in the book of, in the book of uh, Genesis chapter 6, and the Bible says, and the whole earth was corrupt before the Lord. Before the Lord. But everything was normal before people. But God said they were corrupt. Now, to you, you may look like somebody who is. However, to God, you may be somebody who is not. What makes you to be 
is what I'm going to discuss the next time. The word. And I'm going to uh, beckon on you to come with me to see. So how do I harness the word so that my life could be and could align with the beginning, could align with the foundation, could align with the template, could align with the prototype, the model that God has set from the very beginning. He's not just laying the foundation now. There is no other foundation that any man can lay than that which is laid. The foundation is laid already. He is not laying another foundation. How do I connect? How do I align with that foundation so that this structure that my life represents could stand well and stand to the very end? Would you like to bow your head? I like, before I hand you over to the studio on the other end, I want you to think first are you a friend of the beginning? Have you found the word? What defines your life? Who are you? What the word says or what the world says? What your HR manager says? Or what the word of God says. What defines your marriage? The word or the world? What defines your life? The word or the world? As I share, as we share together during our family altar this morning, I just told the family members that I concluded in my heart that there is no, no matter how sharp your eyes could be, you can't see well. You need the goggle, which is the word of God, to see. You will see it. it is the lamp unto our feet. Every man who does not walk by the word of God has a feet that is blind. It is a light to our path. Every man who jettisons the word of God walks in the dark path. He is walking in darkness. And that may describe your life. That may be why your life is formless and God announces that it is empty. So much cars, yet empty. So much money, yet empty. So much girls, yet empty. So much friends, yet empty. So much followers on social media, yet empty. So much designer clothes, designer bags, designer shoes, designer everything, yet empty. Because you live without the word. We would like to pray. And say, Lord, eh, that I may not just be empty barrel making noise. Reconnect me with the beginning. That I may access the word which is life. And that I may find a new definition for my life from now. We would like to pray like that. I want to pray with you immediately so that I can hand you over to the studio on the other end and then they can lead us to more prayers and whatever announcement the Lord will want them to give to us. Lord, there is a need for a reconnection. And for everyone that is praying now, responding to this message, and he's saying, Lord, you need to reconnect me. I'm asking that you respond to them. I'm also praying for myself that you will reconnect me with the word, the beginning, so that I can access the word that is called life. No man has ever started to live until he's reconnected with the word, because in him is life. And that life is the light of men. He is the light, he is the education, he is the understanding, he is the civilization, he is, he is the modernization of every man. Right education is not the secular one that is given, it is the word. What enlightens a man? We have seen people who are well educated and yet they are just mere intellectual illiterates. They live as though they have never been to the four walls of a university. They do things that are bestial. They do things that you don't think an 
a honey, an animal we try yet educated because they were only uh, 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 educated secularly they have not seen the light the light and the life is the world i am pleading with you that you reconnect me with the beginning and give me fresh access to the life which is the world and cause me to grow thereby and everyone listening and everyone pray will you please respond to uh, to them right now in the name of jesus we would like to bring this prayer point to a close as i pray in jesus name we have prayed lord thank you for granting us permission to look at your word briefly today on the platform of friends of bread international thank you for making us to be to befriend the bread of life. And thank you for the way you have started with us this day. And I'm pleading with you, Holy Father, that each one of us will have a reconnection with the beginning, a reconnection with the foundation, a reconnection with the source. Once a man is disconnected with the source, he loses his originality. And there is no way he could prove his origin and his originality as long as he's disconnected from the origin. Lord, I pray that you will reconnect us with the origin. You will reconnect us with the source, with the foundation, with the beginning, so that we can have free access to the world. And by it we may live, by it we may, we may get the real, true life that our heart longs for. I pray, Lord Jesus, that as many as are responding to this a word of God today, you will please save them to the uttermost. Thank you, their Father, for we have prayed with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. I'd like to hand you over to the studio on the other end. Um, I think in four hours' time, uh, we should be back together. Thank you for watching.